Welcome to DNA Engineering and Innovation Channel. Today I will talk about some of the innovation I will I have developed and not necessarily shown you what I have designed and tested during the years I have had my company. And today we are talking about cars brakes. We all know that cars have brakes and every car needs one. If you go fast you need to brake and take the speed out. And what the brake does it changes the momentum to heat and what you need to know when you design car brakes is that you need to have certain amount of heat which you need to dissipate and take inside the brakes and that comes with specific heat capacity of each material which is very important normally the brake material is steel during the whole whole brake uh, rotors but the prototype which I have here is made with many composite components. So it has a patch which are still on the outer side. In this case I think it was 5 mm thick steel plates on the outer side. This takes the breaking force of the brake fats, brats, <laughs> pads. And but you you know that if you design a brake caliber like a rotor like this size, it weighs, I think it was 7.2 kilos. And you want to get cars lighter to save fuel and more energy efficient and stuff like that. So I wanted to design my own brake rotor. So I started to think how could I make it easily and uh, get it better performance wise than normal brake rotors which are just steel. You need to have some kind of skills with aerodynamics like the inner fins of this is, are designed to be aerodynamic and air can go from in to out or, or from out to in depending what kind of uh, pattern you want for your brakes to use. And here I have also aluminium here. There are sheet, sheet metal parts from aluminium like first uh, one 10, 10 millimeter thick plate of aluminium. After that I have 20 millimeter thick aluminium sheet cut with water cutting to get the offset for this brake rotor correctly in the car which I tested. But what is interesting I have also inside of this is aluminium. And what's, what's clever in aluminium is that it's much lighter than steel. But it also can take inside a lot more heat than the steel. So it's lighter and it can take more heat inside before the one Celsius change in the inside of the material. So you need to have calculations that show that the heat that you can take inside the rotor is higher or same as the normal caliper. I think this caliper or rotor was about 1.9 kilos lighter than the stock steel rotor. So the weight was uh, a lot lighter. What's more interesting that I also tested, like I all test my own, own products and innovation in my own cars or anything else, I, I need to be sure that they work. So I have tested these calipers or rotors for 10,000 kilometers in my Audi A4. And I found some pretty interesting facts that if it was moist weather when I tested this, the brakes actually got cooler about 20 Celsius cooler than the normal steel rotors in the same braking test. But if the weather was uh, hot, like plus 20 Celsius, uh, what they actually did that they got cooler much faster, but not fast enough because if I did like accurate to 140 kilometers and then brakes to stop and accurate again, brake to stop and accurate again and brake to stop, the temperature started to get over 400 Celsius. And what this does to aluminum, it starts to change its shape on the press force on the brakes. So what it did that the rotor started to vibrate. And with this, of course, there's the next version coming where I have solved all of these issues and it should work better and is also lighter. And of course, the prototypes is always expensive, but cost of these two pieces of brake rotors was 500 euros to make if you don't calculate the cost of the labor. And basically they are just bolted through and fastened. So 
it's quite easy to make already in the prototype size but of course if you start to make them in serial production you can get the cost pretty down because the materials itself they are not expensive to get or use just the prototyping is expensive because you need to use special tools and methods to get the parts work and test them thanks for watching and follow my channel more interesting stuff is coming in the next videos.